Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where the best laid plans have been laid in tatters by the genius of the constructors that Mark and I face every day. Um, today we were planning to have Classic Sudoku Day on the channel because we've received Classic Sudokus recently from two of the world's best constructors of Classic Sudoku, Shy, uh, and that's in fact the puzzle on the screen at the moment, and Jovial. So. Uh, they both sent us puzzles and Mark attempted the jovial puzzle earlier on, but apparently it is absolutely monstrously hard. I can show it to you actually. It's, it's this puzzle. Um, now if you want to have a go at this to find out why Mark thought, found it so difficult, you can. I will leave a link to this puzzle under the video. So have a go and see how you get on. Um, but basically, um, after Mark's go, and I think he did solve it, but he used bifurcation, his patented technique. So once he bifurcated and found the solution and thought there was no logical way of doing it, he investigated it more. He then understood the logical way, decided that there was no way I would find the logical way. So he told me what the, what the trick is for this puzzle. Um, so I couldn't have a go at solving it myself, but I will tell you, there is no way I would have spotted the trick in this puzzle. So I don't feel bad about that at all. But I have, uh, well, what we've done is we're going to upload Mark Solve to Patreon. Uh, so it should actually, that should be out by the time this video appears, assuming I can solve the shy puzzle. Um, and I'm going to put uh, a little introduction into Mark Solve explaining the trick. It is a remarkable trick. It is it's ridiculously clever from Jovial, ridiculously clever. But also, I will say, it is barbarically difficult. <laughs> it is barbarically difficult to see. Um, so if you want to see something, well, have a go at the puzzle. Maybe some of you will be able to solve it. We get a lot of geniuses watching this channel. Uh, have a go at the puzzle, see how you get on. If you do manage to solve it, fantastic. If you don't, your, there's a trick over on Patreon for you right now. Uh, right, that all said and done, I hope I will be able to do justice to King Dakar by Shy. Um, I should know what a King Dakar is. I think it might be a roller coaster, but I forgot to check before I started the webcam rolling. So again, someone, someone will have to tell me. Um, and I'm, I'm assured this puzzle is also very difficult. Uh, in fact, Shy herself asked me to put it into a solver at the start of this video to prove to you all how difficult this was. Let me try and do that now. Here we go. Um, so this is the puzzle. Uh, now, I'm not very good at using this stuff. I think I have to click take step or something. So let's do that and see what happens. Take step, take step. Right, okay, so, <laughs> okay. Somewhat dauntingly, when you click take step, the computer has no logical strategies to use to solve this puzzle before it gets to Bowman's bingo. Now Bowman's bingo is just guessing. So this uh, puzzle is impervious, it seems, to all known logical techniques, at least, at least of this Sudoku solver. There, it's still doing Bowman's bingo. Oh, good grief. And now it, now it's not even got Bowman. It doesn't know how to do it. It just has run out of known strategies. Use solution count to check to see if the puzzle only has one solution. Click that. Uh, right, there we go. So it does have only one solution, but the computer has no idea how to find it. Great. <laughs> what chance does little old me have? I've been watching a lot of the chess over the last few days and it always it keeps amusing me, you know, when I when we hear the engine evaluation of the position. Or well, the engine's evaluation of this position is that I'm not going to be able to do it. Oops. Um anyway, uh the the other thing we've got on Patreon, I should just mention it. First of December today, we've got the uh, December monthly reward. Have a go at it. Four puzzles to solve. Um, I'm not going to say whether they're easy or hard. They're, some of them are approachable. And um, if you can solve it within the first 20 days, send us your solution for a chance to win a Bubba is You key. Um, now, all that said and done, I will read you the rules to King Dakar by Shy. This won't take me long. Normal Sudoku rules apply. There, I've read them out. We hopefully all know what normal Sudoku is. Have a go at the puzzle yourself. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Uh, 
oh, you know what I should do? You know what's a good idea? Because the computer basically, um, it couldn't do anything. But it did, it did um, put the options in for all this. Oh, no, but it used Bowman's bingo, didn't it? So it will, it will have done some eliminations based on Bowman's bingo. So I can't actually use it. Let's just have a quick scan and see if there's anything. So there might be a restricted square in row two, column four. The central square might be restricted. Apart from that, I'm not so well, that square maybe. Um, but yeah, okay, so the computer's done very, very little. So how are we going to solve this puzzle? Um, and this is this is the strange thing because normally when I solve what I do is I'd start with the ones probably or I'd, I'd try and spot a digit that was appearing relatively often and I would do normal Sudoku and let's, let's do that <laughs> let's do that in the interest of having nothing else to do threes we got a lot we've got a few threes we've got two threes into those squares fours yeah fours can be in one of those two positions in box eight fives fives are a bit more interesting perhaps we at least we've got four of them um no don't like fives <laughs> sixes <laughs> don't think i like sixes i can see sixes locked into some interesting cells in box six okay sevens Sevens are locked into those two. Sevens are locked into those three, which I won't pencil mark. I don't tend to pencil mark in classic Sudoku where a digit can go in three positions in a box. I tend to find that is excessive and not that helpful. Good grief, though. I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised I can't do anything by normal techniques here because, of course, um, the computer, which knows more advanced techniques than I, I know, can't do it. Um, so restricted cells now the computer thought I've forgotten which cell the computer thought was restricted was it that one or was it that one that one looks quite restricted one two three that, yeah okay that square is restricted it sees one two three four five and six straight away that can only be eight or nine now one thing I will say that that shy is generous enough about with her puzzles uh, where I mean we've we've showcased a number of Shire's puzzles where she's developed revolutionary techniques for solving classic Sudoku and she does try and telegraph them she gives the solver a chance to solve them um, so we've got to just think about so so that's why I'm quite interested in this square you know because that's been reduced to just two options and it's likely, or at least it could, be the little nub that we need to think about in order to solve the puzzle. Um, now, what was the other square? The central square was restricted, wasn't it? Oh, and that square, I think, was restricted. Right, let's check this one. One, two, three, six. That does see seven, eight, nine as well. So this one is another restricted square. The central square can be one, two, can't be three, four. Uh, can't be five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So that square, that square is even more uh, interesting to me because, of course, if Shy's hiding stuff, this is the sort of place she might do it. So we need to think about this square. I think that was all the squares uh, that the computer thought were restricted. Um, well, the computer's done that one as well. Three, nine in row five, column six. Okay, sorry, there is some hoovering going on in the house at the moment, so I hope that's not gonna disturb the video. Um, this square, let's check this one. So this one can be, uh, well, I can't see how to eliminate one and two from this square. What am I missing here? Four? I can see it's not four, five, six, or seven, or eight. So that seems to me to be able to be one, two, three, or nine. I don't understand that. Maybe the computer did Bowman's bingo on this square then, because it's not obvious at all how to do that. So, 
ones and twos look I'm thinking about this square I'm just thinking about ones and twos ones and twos are sort of in a a cross shape in box three Ah, uh, what's that doing? Um, I don't know is the answer, but this is, this is the only thing that's catching my eye. Um, so ones and twos are in, let's just highlight these squares and think about this for a moment. Can we deduce something about the combination of this having to be a one, one or a two? Uh, well, the answer is, I don't, I don't know, and I'm about to sneeze. That's never a good thing. I will resist manfully. Um, one or two. So whatever this is, it's locking itself out of those two squares right okay so whatever this is there is a restriction on one well we don't know whether it's one or two but we do know let's just think of, hang on a minute so if this was a one let's try and do it that way if this was a one then the one in row one couldn't be in those three couldn't be in here so it would have to be in it would have to be in one of those two cells and the same would be true you're right okay this is interesting the same would be true in column nine because if this was a one you couldn't put a one here or here the one in column nine would have to be in one of those two squares but simultaneously it has to be in one of those two squares so it would have to go in the corner so and the same logic must apply to two because they're basically in analogous positions so whatever this square is is forced into the corner of the grid right this is where we need to look ones and twos so whatever this is ends up in the corner But what does that mean in terms of anything else? Does that, what does it mean for the other digit then? So let's assume this was a one for a moment, then the two could still go in any of those three positions. If the two was here, then you'd have to put two in both of those positions. Um, I don't know what that means, I have to say. If you do put the two in both, if the two, so sorry, if the two is here, this is all predicated on this being a one, but the logic should work the other way around. If the two is here, you have to put a two in those two squares. You then can't put a two in these two squares, which means that you get what do you get? You get a two in one of those two and a two in one of these two. So does that put two in that corner? Is that true? Or am I going a step too far there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If this, if these are ones. Oh no, it's, it's, yeah, it's a bit less clear than that, isn't it? Because if these are ones, then two in row one is in one of Ah, oh, yeah, okay. The two in row one is in one of exactly two positions. And the same is true, obviously, if these are twos instead. Then the one is in one of two positions. It can't go here because there's a one-two pair in the column. 
So those are the two positions for the other digit, the digit that's not green. And the same presumably works in column nine. If whatever this is, the other digit must be in one of those two squares. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's a little bit interesting, isn't it? But it's not nearly enough to solve the puzzle. So maybe I've got to think harder about what this square is. If that square, is there something going on in box seven? If, there, if Let's just put a one in here, just for the sake of argument. If this is a one, The one goes here and the one goes there in box seven. And the one goes here and the one goes here. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's weird. Now, does it work the same way with twos? Because what that's telling us is that if these are ones, you have to put a one in the bottom left-hand corner of the grid. Now, if these are twos, I think the logic is the same because you rule out, it's really beautiful. You rule out two from both of those squares and the position of the two forces a two into one of, well, one of this pair and one of this pair, which means that again, it's the same logic about where the two ends up in box seven. It's got to be in one of these three and simultaneously one of these three, which is the only square that satisfies it is the bottom left-hand corner. So actually this square acquires the mantle of greenness. Okay. Uh, which means what then? So if this is green, I don't know. If this is green, I still don't really, it's this very clever setup. You don't, until we know what this is, we're not gonna know whether we can pencil mark those two or those two in boxes four and eight. What about the other digit then? So whichever is the other digit. Do we know where that goes? Either in this box or in these, oh, I, actually I don't even know where I need to look for where the other digit goes. Let's just put one in again. I think I'd, I'm going to have to just sort of do that to visualize what's going on. So if we do this, the question I want to ask is where two now has to go. So, so two, we know that two is in one of these two and one of these two. So two can't simultaneously be in both of those squares, can it? Because, so what I mean by that is in row one, if I do decide this is a two, then that's forcing the position of the two in column nine. It would then have to be here because you can't simultaneously put the twos in row one and column nine, both in those squares. So at least, right, at least one of these squares is a two. Let's highlight that. So there is definitely a two. It, well, there's definitely the digit that's not in the center is definitely in one of those two positions. And possibly, possibly in both, if this square is a two. But didn't we find a few minutes ago that that forced a two down here? I can't remember. If there's a two in both of those. Yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Although I can put a two here. The two in both of those positions rules out two from those two positions in boxes four and eight. And then I get a two in one of those, a two in one of these, and I'd have exactly the same problem. Yes, I'd have to put, this would have to be a Schrodinger cell. This would simultaneously have to be a one and a two. And of course this logic works exactly the same way. If I change these to twos and then say the one has to be, a, what happens if the one is in both of those positions? It's not possible. 
So we are learning slowly about how the geometry of this puzzle works. And let's just take a pause here and admire. I mean, how do you come up with this, let alone execute it? I mean, imagine lying in bed and thinking, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some weird pattern involving ones and twos in a classic Sudoku. Uh, and even if you could envisage how this pattern might, you know, might work, how would you then set it? It's just, it's completely bonkers. It's just a, 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 a brain, you know, a method of making your brain think that I do not, I do not know how Shy does this. I would love, I'd love to know. I mean, Shy did make us a video about how she made Valtari. I remember that. But I also, I watched that and was, you know, I was sort of, it was like watching magic being performed. Um, okay, so what exactly one of these is now the digit that's not in the center. So is that telling us anything useful? So let's let's just hypothesize, shall we? If this was a two, that's placing a two in one of those. Ah, ah, that, that is immediately interesting. Hang on a moment, let me just think about this. If that's not a two and this is a two, then the two has to be down. Oh, this is beautiful, I understand. I understand. I don't know what it does, but I understand. Right. Whichever one of these is the digit that's not in the in the green, one of them must be the digit that's not in the green. In, in this version, we're saying that the one of these has to be a two. So let's just carry on with that. But bear in mind, this logic is completely reversible. It would work exactly the same way if these were twos and these were ones, or one of these was one a one. So let's just look at this because it's absolutely beautiful. If you get a two here, you also have to put a two here because of the way that these, these, these ones and twos work in these boxes. Because now in this box, you can't put a two here. So the two is in one of those two squares, which means the two is in one of those two squares where it marries up with its friend over here and then gets ended up being put down here. But that logic is completely completely it works the same way if we if we let's remove this hopefully it's very clear let's imagine this wasn't the two but this was the two now what happens down here well we have to put a two in one of those we have to put a two in one of these this two tells us which one it is but the the point is that we still haven't put the two in column one of the grid it's going to have to go there so why do i think this is this is interesting well in a way, we can now conclude something about column five and row five, because we now know, we don't know, we don't know which of these is the two, and we don't know which of these is the two, but we know one of them is a two. And we also know, so let's delete the one, delete these now. So we know that there is a sort of virtual one, two pair. We know that between these three cells in column five, there is a one, two pair. And between these three cells in row five, there is a one, two pair. So that leads to some eliminations in these squares. We can eliminate ones and twos. Now I'm actually gonna go back to the computer. Oh, the computer got that elimination. The computer got that elimination. It reduced that to a three or a nine. I remember this, well, the computer didn't do it like this, but it used Bowman's bingo in guessing Let's go back here. I can now, I can, yes, look, I can eliminate a one or a two from this square. I can, look, this square here. Um, that cannot be a one or a two by this logic because there's a one, two pa virtual pair in those three cells. So this square, if it's not one or two, let's check. It's not three, four, it's not six, seven, eight or nine, it's naked single, that's a five. And we have a digit in this puzzle, which the computer couldn't get. That's a five by Sudoku. Um, oh, I really would like to get more than that. I can't see how to do that, though. Let's just have a look around the grid and see if we can do some Sudoku. Um, 
let's and in fact let's let's go back to this as well to see if we oh we're going to get that digit i should check the row as well so we can we can limit this digit limit this digit mm. so it looks like this is the other really major digit that we should be able to get using this method so let's have a look we can we know this isn't a one or a two it's not a three four five yes and it's c seven eight and nine so it is a six and that's a three therefore there's a six in one of these two squares six in one of these two squares um, which is wonderful does it do enough for us to really break the puzzle open that's the question and the answer is I don't know yet this square I'm going to come to to check because this square obviously can't be one two what are the options I mean in fact if we just look down this column we must be looking at a four or a seven into this square only but I don't think it's resolved is it that's a bit of a disappointment um, okay let's check the rest of the column then ones twos fours and sevens so this is a one two or a seven that's definitely a one or a two that's a one two four or seven as well okay so we have run out of room let us think then about we better check the whole of row five because we know that there are some eliminations we can do in these three squares so this one is not a one or a two or a three but it could be a four or a nine i think four or nine is all that gets left in this one this one that should come down to three or nine that's what the computer said so let's double check it it can't be one or two because of our logic four five six seven eight yeah okay three or nine only which is almost good enough but not quite good enough this square that can't be a one or a two or a three could be a four can't be a five six seven could be an eight oh you rotten thing you rotten thing so so <laughs> <laughs> pregnant pause while I try and spot something else here oh I've spotted something else I've spotted something else where does nine go in the middle box this nine here rules it out of that square it's a naked single well a hidden single it's got to go there that gives us a four that gives us an eight wow okay let's pause there and make sure we use these pencil marks because clearly this puzzle is oh that's a four six pair now because uh, clearly this puzzle is not going to be straightforward oh yes okay I've now got a one two pair in box six out of nowhere okay uh, nines I got this four didn't I and that four has not done a great deal for me outside of the central three rows eight here no that's also not done quite enough for me okay these squares here are ah that's got to be a one two or a three i see where does three go in the middle box it's got to go there so this is a one or two. Oh, yeah okay which means that square is a three and that well that's mighty isn't it because surely that's going to tell me once we know this is a three we know this square is a one or a two because we know because that that was the whole basis of the logic we were doing you know if if this square uh was was the key square that was the one or the two out of these two you got the equivalent here so this square is now a one or a two and that's lovely because if that's a one or a two that goes with that one and it seems to give me a seven at the top of the grid and a four here and a seven here by sudoku um and the four here now the four here still it, it's still not collapsing but but i'm now a little bit hopeful i might be able to solve the puzzle and that is exciting so 
Now, I would really like to know which order the ones and twos went in. That's what I really would like to know. These squares here are ones, twos and sevens. And that's not a one and that's not a two. And these squares are ones, twos and nines. And that's not a two and that's not a one. So I'm not sure where to look now. I'm tempted to look at either row two or box two, I think. One, two, eight, nine. There's got to be a nine in this domino. That's true. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't seem to do it, does it? Um, one, two, eight, nine. No, one, two, seven and eight down here. So, oh, that. Hang on, is that square a naked single? One, this square here is a one, from the column, it has to be one, two, seven, or eight. It sees one, two, and seven. I think that has to be an eight, and that has to be a nine, therefore. And that leaves a one, two pair in those two squares. I've now got a one, two pair in this column. I've got a six, eight pair at the bottom of this box. So I must need ones, twos, and sevens into these squares. That feels very symmetrical with what I did over there. Um, so there's probably some weird symmetry stuff going on that I'm not quite appreciating. Right, I've got a one, two here and a one, two here and a one, two here. So that means that little square has to be a one or a two, which creates a one, two pair in column seven. Those two squares now have to be a four, six pair. That's unbelievable that that's not resolved, but it's not. Ah, but it does lead a four, six pair in this column, which means we need eights and nines in the periphery, which of course isn't resolved. You rotten thing. <laughs> um, bar humbug, I shall use an expletive fit for the season um okay three eight nine threes are threes eights and nines that's not a nine that's not an eight. Oh, okay so the three in this little triple is definitely in one of those two squares which means that the, that seems to have to be a three yeah okay by sudoku this is a three and that's now a five which ah, I can see that's doing I can see something that's doing let me just see if I can see anything else it's doing what it's doing I think is telling us this square is an 8 or a 9 and it can't be an 8 so that's a 9 and that's an 8 and therefore this is a 3 and this is a 9 which means this is a 3 by Sudoku there's an eight in one of these. Th oh, and this eight means that's a nine, of course. Now, now nine is forced here. Five is forced here. Five is forced there. Nine. Why did I think this was a nine? Because of Sudoku. Well, that's now pointing at this, which is giving me, I think that's the first one or two we've got in the grid. Two, seven, one, nine. Now that becomes a one. That's a two, therefore one is on the green, which means that must be a two and that must be a two. And that's a seven, that's a one. Come on, that's a two, that's a one, that's a two. Okay, now I just need four, six and eight into these squares, which, oh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's resolved. I just can't immediately see how to do it. That's not eight. That's not six and that's not four. So this column appears to need a four or an eight at the bottom of it. Um, oh, come on, this this must be done, isn't it? Four, six, oh, it's four, six and eight here as well. Okay. This row perhaps, one, two, three, four, so six, seven and eight, that's a six or a seven. Yes, that's a six naked single. That's a four, that's an eight, that's a six. That's an eight, that's a six. That's now a seven. So this should be a four or a six. This square here is now known. That should be a two. Oh, that's, that's a bit terrifying, but it does seem to have to be a two. Ones and twos are the most terrifying digits. Four, six there means that square should be Sorry, six nine there means that square should be a four. Six 
nine six four six four five here no that's a five there don't get this wrong simon four seven and eight that's a four that's an eight and that's a seven ah i've got two nines oh no how did i do that is this that looks like it's got to be an eight I think I'm, I think that was a misclick. It looks like a misclick. I have solved it, thank goodness. Now let me just go back and see. Oh yes, okay. So I went. Okay, I just put the wrong digit in. Thank goodness. Okay, I will forgive myself that. I'm very, very pleased to have got through that puzzle. King to car by shy. It's so clever. My goodness me. So let's just refresh our memories as to how we solve that. So. It's not too difficult, I think, to note that once you get a one, two in the middle, you've got these weird one, twos here. So it's probably one and two is the digit to focus on because we, well, there was nothing else the computer revealed as even a restricted cell. It wasn't that easy though, at least not for me, to understand that this digit had to be the same as this digit. Not monstrously hard, but not immediate. And then you could sort of work into this square also having to be the same. And then it was fascinating to think about how the other digit had to work. And the fact that one of these had to be that other digit and exactly one of them. And then you could actually get that digit on sort of the other side of the diagram in, a, in the perimeter as well, which locked ones and twos into the perimeter in row five and row six. That bit I understood quite quickly. Um, but wasn't it beautiful that it then immediately crack the puzzle open in this column. I just love it. I mean, this sort of thing is just sensationally clever. Shy, take a bow as always. And thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'll look, look at the comments with interest on this one. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.